YouTube, what's going on? So this video right here is from two years ago. It was the first time I was ever on a main stage on a, at an expo, and I wasn't really sure what to what to be prepared for. The one thing that I knew, the few things I knew, was that Jeezy, myself, and Kanken and his Randy was supposed to be on stage. It was supposed to be like the YouTube part of the main stage. And I was excited about it. Um, I had my model. I knew I only had 20 minutes. So what I saw throughout the day and from shows before, prior, was on the main stage with 20 minutes, you're not really teaching a class, right? Usually it's, you have an MC, you have the people who are showcasing, the MC tries to keep the crowd engaged and entertained while asking some of the, the people on stage some questions and really kind of controlling it and making sure that everything was good. Well, things went a little differently here. So I, I knew I had to get to the stage at a specific time so I could get mic'd up. I got mic'd up and I get on stage and then Cake and his Randy comes on stage and I notice he doesn't have a microphone on. I'm like, okay. And then Jeezy doesn't come on stage. And I found out after he didn't come on stage because instead of coming on stage at that time, he had gone on stage the day before. So it changed, they changed everything and I wasn't aware of it. So I get on stage, I'm thinking the MC is going to be there with us, and he walks off stage. At this moment, I knew I had to wing it. I'm the only one on stage with a microphone. I had 20 minutes to do a haircut and keep the crowd engaged and explain everything. It's my first time on a main stage. I didn't want to bomb. It was it was pretty nerve wracking. And so you'll notice, you know, obviously I, I'm not going to be the best that I can be on this stage. I've gotten better since then. I've been on the main stage a few times after, but this was a hell of a day in my career because it was the first time I was on, my, on the main stage. I got an award and it was it was cool. I was just praying that I wouldn't bomb. And uh, you guys let me know how it went. Check out, um, let me know in the comments below if you if you thought it was good for, for the circumstances. And uh, yeah, let's get started. YouTube video while we're here. Say hi guys to YouTube. YouTube. What up? All right, cool. So we're recording a YouTube video as we go. I'm gonna close the lever. We're gonna take this panel out. I'm not gonna move on until I blend this panel out. That's how you get lost in your fades. How many of y'all get lost in your fades? I don't want to get lost in my fades, okay? So I'm gonna close this up, and I'm gonna take that line out. Look how quickly we take that line out. You guys see how quick we take that line out? Most of the time, you're struggling taking that line out because you're not going up high enough. It's not because you ain't zero gap. It's not because you're not using a surgical blade. I punched that line in, and I still took the line out with this taper blade, okay? So it's closed, we're going up about a third of the way, okay? We'll follow that up, quarter of the way open, another third of the way. Look how quickly we blend that panel out. So when I make my YouTube videos, guys, I have to pay attention to the camera while I'm cutting hair. I have to make sure that it's focused, I have to make sure that you guys can see what's going on. Because if not, then I've recorded this for no reason. So now it's about halfway open and this panel is pretty much blended, okay? So my next step is my one open, my one open. How many of you guys do the one open next? Cool, pretty universal. So one open, about the same way up, right? About fingers width, each panel is about fingers width. You need that space to create a nice transition, okay? So once we go all the way open, we'll follow that, follow that up all the way close, all the way close, okay? Brandy, they didn't give you a mic? They did not, it's good. You're doing perfect. <laughs> You're doing all right, bro. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, bro. That's what I thought. I mean, I thought we was at like... <laughs> all right, cool. So it's almost blended. There's a soft bit of weight there. We can use the half guard, right? Use the half guard to take that right out, but I like to skip guards, all right? So I'm just gonna use my blade open, and this is where it's beneficial to use the shape of that blade, because if you see in the camera, do you, hold on, let me back that up. Do you see how that comes off the head already? Why well, I gotta flick out if the tool's gonna do the job for me, okay? So we're gonna use the back of the blade to go ahead and take that weight out. We don't need to use the half guard. You guys see how that's blending right out? Okay. Understand your tools and, and, and why, why they're designed the way they're designed. 
Beautiful. So the next step, guys, is my number two guard. I'm going number two closed. Okay. And the fade's almost done, guys. We're, we've gone through two thirds of the haircut. Well, just one side, just one side. <laughs> Where's my number two guard? Okay, I've been, I've been set. Oh, here it goes. I got it right here. Thank you, bro. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to my comb because the hair is a little bit longer. If you use the brush right now, you're just gonna be patting hair down. I want it to really comb the hair and control the hair, okay? And we're gonna come off the shape of the head, just like this. That's gonna keep that squared shape, okay? I don't, I don't want, I wanna, I, I wanna do less steps. I don't wanna have to do clip over comb, scissor over comb. The less steps I have to take, the better. So I'm gonna use the shape of his head, okay? to go ahead and start to debulk this. And I'm not creating any lines. With my number two, I'm blending right into what's, what's going on right here. You guys see that? Doing that with my number two guard, okay? Now, we can follow that up with the one and a half guard if we wanted to, or we can use the shape of the guard as well to blend right into that. So essentially, the only guard I'm doing to create a fade I'm using is the number one. That's it. We haven't used a half guard, we haven't even used a one and a half guard. We're just using the one to create most of this blend. I can hear you. Wow, thank you, man. That's dope, man. Come in, man. Thank you, man. Absolutely, you well deserved it. Thank Everyone you. here, check out his YouTube page. Appreciate it, man. Last year, he came here. I saw him online. He said, I got to defend him. Like, come, come, come. So it's great to have both of you and my man, KK Grandy, on stage at once. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot, man. That is fire, man. Boy, that Instagram post about to be lit. <laughs> I caught that on YouTube too, Lee. All right. So the blend's coming together, man, little by little. I'm gonna turn you because angles are important, guys. I need to see. I need to see the same haircut in different angles and different lighting. One of the things that irritate me the most, man, is when somebody gets out of my chair, I see it in different, different light, and it just looks different. I want to see it when I comb it in different ways that it, it lays the same. I want to see in different lightings that it looks the same. I'm OCD when it comes to that. But it doesn't mean that you can't create a nice fade in 30 minutes or less, guys. Because at the end of the day, this is our passion, but it's also how we provide for our family. It's the best of both worlds. So you got, you, you got to be able to manage both of them. Man, I wish I could hand around a mic just to, for like Q&A. I love Q&A. Let me get out of the way. And I'm checking my camera, making sure. So guys, one thing you guys don't know about YouTube, man, the videos that we create, it's not like Instagram where we can just use our phone and, and take a picture or make, or make a cool video. We literally spend hours, hours making each video that we drop. From even our haircuts, we fall behind on haircuts because we gotta make sure we're, we're looking down, the lighting is right, that you guys can see what's going on. But then, we have to load everything up in our computers, render it, edit. Just the editing portion takes two, three hours for a video. So the whole, the whole production time, if you think about between the haircutting, the recording, transferring the files, editing everything, and then uploading it, you're talking about five hours worth of work for each video. It's hard work. And I know a lot of you guys have, have dreams of, of doing YouTube and, and eventually making that happen. If you're going to do that, you have to be committed to it. You have to stay, you have to stay consistent because YouTube is a business. They know they make money off of me. They take 45% of what I make, right? 
So they're not gonna suggest my videos if nobody's clicking on them, if I'm not pumping videos out. So you have to drop at least one video a week. If you don't, they stop. They just, they, they just ignore your channel and then your channel's dead. So if you're gonna do it, you, what I, wanna, I don't wanna sugarcoat nothing. You gotta put in the work. You gotta be willing to put five hours at least a week into this. And if you're just starting off and you're in the barbershop and you're pumping and, you're, and you're, you know, you're pumping it out in the barbershop, that means five hours away from your family. You get what I'm saying? Every week that you come to, you leave work, you're going right to work with this, okay? So I just, I just kind of want to make it, make it clear. YouTube, YouTube is, is definitely, it's definitely another job. It's another business. But the blend's coming together, guys. And we got about 12 minutes. I'm taking too long. But we're done with like um, two thirds of the head because the back is done too. And the guys, I use the same system for every texture of hair. For every texture of hair, whether it's, it's coarse, curly, whether it's coarse, coarse, straight, whether it's fine, curly, fine, straight, I use the same system. That allows me to be consistent with every client that I, that I take, whether it's the first time I cut his hair or the hundredth time I cut his hair. Now the back is important, guys. The back is, is very important because in the back, what happens is if you don't pay attention to head shape, you can run into issues when you go too high to the cow. And one of the things, my favorite things that I've learned, that I've heard when I travel, is that American barbers are considered crown killers. How many of y'all want to be crown killers? You want to be a crown killer? No, no, no. <laughs> we don't want to be crown killers, man. So, you know, that's, 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 that's part of paying attention to square silhouettes and shape, right? As long as you keep things squared, you'll allow enough length to reach that comb so that it'll lay down, so it'll sit the way it should sit, okay? And lighting's terrible, so again, I'm just kind of moving his head different angles, making sure it looks good. Because one, one of the worst parts, like educating isn't easy because you, you gotta step out of your comfort zone. Man, I'm comfortable at my, at my station in my barbershop with my lighting, with my mirror, with, I could just go like this and grab my guards and know it's by second nature where all my tools are. But when you come on stage, it's a, it's a whole nother monster, man. I remember the first class I did was horrific, <laughs> horrific. All right, cool, so we got one side, we got pretty much two thirds of the haircut done. We just need to finish this up, okay? And we got 10 minutes left. So we're not doing too bad in timing. So I'm gonna go ahead and comb it, okay? Part of the reason why I'm combing it isn't just because I'm looking for his head shape, indents, imperfections. It's also because I wanna open up the hair. If my comb doesn't comb through the hair easily, how is my guard gonna feed through it? If you ever have issues where you, you, you gotta run in the same spot, in the same spot over and over again, because it's not coming out even, it's probably because you didn't prepare the hair. You didn't, you didn't open up the hair, okay? So guys, part of, part of my whole thing, man, like right now, um, one of the things that I've been talking about recently is how do you charge pri certain prices, right? And this is kind of, the way I think of it is a little bit unconventional. How many of you guys want to know how to raise your prices, right? How, how to raise your prices. So I'm going I'm to tell you the way I, I look at it, okay? I look at barbering as a business, right? How many of you guys came into barbering because you want to be your own boss? Right? Me too. And business 101 is supply and demand. For me, I don't raise my prices based on adding services, based on getting better at cutting hair, to be honest with you. The market will always tell you the truth. They'll always tell you if you're worth more. If you're worth more, you're booked, right? 
Do the math on your, on your phone right now. I made a video about this on my online academy. Do the math on your phone right now. If you do $20, $20 haircuts, right, at 18 heads a day, times five, not times six or seven, times five, a regular job, that's $90,000 a year. You add tips to that, you're looking at like 107,000. Let's just say the average tip is five bucks. That's realistic, right? Cause we're talking realistic. That's $107,000 a year at $20 a haircut. Okay, let's, let's just start there. Let's, let's get booked. Let's, let's really just dominate our city, our town, our shop, right? At $107,000, you can get something that, right? Now you're so booked, you're two, three, four weeks booked in advance. You raise the price of even $5, that's a $20,000 a year raise. Raise it to 30, from 20 to 30, that's a $40,000 a year raise. You guys get what I'm saying? And that's realistic. That's something that everybody here can do. But get booked first. Does that make sense? Yeah? Cool. All right, so same steps, guys. We, we created our panel. We're going to start to take out that line. Look how easy that line just comes out. Look how easy that line just comes out. Now we're a quarter of the way open. Now we're halfway open. Okay, and if you need to cross check, you can. Cross checking is fade up. If you fade up, fade down. You can cross check it that way. Okay, so we'll go open. We'll go halfway closed. The same steps. We'll go a quarter of the way closed. Close it up, and that panel is blended. Some of my students in my hands-on classes, man, this is, the, this is the hardest part for them. This is what takes them 15 minutes when you're trying to do a 30 minute haircut. We just did that in 30 seconds, right? Right? Okay? So let's move on to our next panel. Our next panel is our number one open. Okay? There it is, that's our panel. Next one is the, the number one closed. That's almost blended out. We're gonna skip the half guard. We're gonna go blade open and we're using the shape of the blade. You guys see that? This is what it looks like. Right here, I don't flick out. I use the blade, the shape of the blade, okay? I let, I let the tools do the work for me, man. Work smarter, not harder, right? That's, that's something we love to say. That's something we love to preach. Work smarter, not harder. Look how easily that's blending that, that panel out. How many of you guys gonna try this when you get home? Wanna try it, yeah? Awesome, cool. All right, so now I'm just kind of detailing little areas that are, I'm not gonna move past this panel until it looks the way I want it to look, okay? Because sometimes there's indents that look a little bit darker. We need to create the illusion that it is the same length all the way through, the same color tone all the way through. But it's starting to look really good right now. All right, so let's move on to our number two guard. We're almost done, guys. We got five minutes left. So number two, close. And we're just coming right off the shape of the head to keep that squared shape. Again, I try, to, I try not to use too much clip over comb, too much scissor over comb. For me, those techniques are refining techniques. They're not what creates my shape. Because it, I know it's geometry. And I know that that's a straight line. A straight line is a squared shape, okay? So I'll use clip over comb at the end. And it's hard to show this on YouTube because I gotta keep everybody engaged. But a lot of people will, will comment like, Chris, if you use Clipper over comb, it'll be faster. But I don't know, for me, this is a quicker way for me. You know, I don't knock any technique out there. Do what you feel most comfortable with. But this has been like the most efficient for me. Okay, we'll follow that up with our one and a half guard. And right beneath that is our one open and the blend should finish up right now. You should you live right now, Loco? That's what I'm talking about. That's good marketing right there. You know what mar good marketing is to me? It's just sharing what you're already doing. That's it. It's putting a camera in front of the things you're already doing. It's organic, it's easy, it's real marketing in my opinion, okay? Alright, so the, 
the face pretty much done. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and go back in and detail a little bit. Cause we got three minutes left. When I have 30 minute appointments, I like to take up all 30 minutes of it. The way I break everything down guys is 10 minutes is the top, the scissors, 10 minutes is the fade, 10 minutes is the experience. There's your 30 minutes. Cause experience matters guys. And part of the experience is turning my, my client around, him seeing a finished haircut and seeing me go back and still detailing the haircut. That's where they feel like you're taking your time. They don't care if it's 45 minutes. Taking your time is actually looking, is actually having a finished cut after 15 minutes and detailing the haircut. So I got three minutes. I need to um, show you guys a, a few other techniques because we got to line him up real quick. You guys enjoying this? Cool? Good? Awesome. I honestly didn't know what to expect. I thought I was going to have a whole somebody, a MC or something. But it's all good. We, <laughs> I thought I was going to have something. I'm doing a tutorial right now. That's it. I'm doing a live tutorial. But man, the award is epic, man. The, the award is epic. I've never gotten an award, man. So it's besides the YouTube ones. So that's dope. Alright, cool. So let's go ahead and start to line him up. Turn around, bro. So we're not going to give him a really hard line because um, we got a minute and a half, not because of time, but because we're leaving this soft, preparing him for a crop top, okay? Obviously, we're not doing the crop top today, but um, I want to I wanna leave it soft for, for when we do do the crop top. So I'm just going to do the corners here, the corners here. And then I'm going to give him a quick enhancement. Okay, just to make it pop a little bit more, and then we'll be finished with his cut. Do the our enhancement. Follow up with the razor. We got 30 seconds. All right, that's it, guys. Did you guys enjoy? It? Did you guys enjoy the class? Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Thank you guys for being a part of. This is the first time I do this, man. So, at the very least, man, the only thing that matters to me is that you guys got some value out of this. So, thank you guys for being, being here. Appreciate y'all. Shout out to Barbican for this, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my YouTube, everything is Chris Basio. Everything is Chris Basio. Just find, find me on Chris Basio, man. I do this twice, three times a week. I put free tutorials out there for you guys to, to watch and learn from. Thank you, guys. Father, you say God. Father, Father, Father. When I say Father, you say God.